Well, out of media day, there's a lot to discuss. It seems like everyone is just so enamored with the Kawhi Leonard robot laugh that they've really missed one of the sneaky stories to come out of Toronto. There is a report that Kyle Lowry, franchise cornerstone Kyle Lowry, has not respond to calls or text from the new head coach, nurse, and GM, Masai Ujiri, all summer long. Ujiri, I said it wrong. I always say it wrong. Anyway, That's all right. At least you got Nick Nurse. Yeah, I got Nick Nurse in there. Ryan, where does that tell you about where Kyle Lowry's head is at, that he's been ghosting two of the most important people in the franchise all summer long? Okay, like a lot of stories, you look at this and you go, okay, I can understand Lowry. He's upset. DeRozan was his dude. We kind of love their comedy duo routine in the last couple years, and now he's out of there. But you just added a better player in Kawhi. And if you're Lowry and you're upset, let's not forget, you're making 30 mil over the next couple years. And it's not always about the money making everything easier, but he has an almost untradeable contract at this point. And the biggest reason that Toronto shook this thing up is because you and your buddy DeRozan couldn't get it done in the playoffs for multiple years. This isn't some small sample size. You and DeRozan have been rather underwhelming your entire playoff career in Toronto, and that's being nice about it. So yes, you can be upset, but what did you expect the franchise to do? They had to change some things, and instead of you being traded, it was your teammate. It's interesting because it's it, you're making perfect sense when you say that, but you got to remember that everyone's a hero in their own movie. Of course. So, like, when Kyle Lowry looks in the mirror, he's not like, oh, you know what? Me and DeRozan couldn't really get it done. I'm so glad they brought in a better player and shook this thing up. He's saying, me and DeRozan were the duo that were going to bring this city a championship. I can't believe you traded away my best friend, and now you've brought in this robot basketball man that got it, they, like, forced his way out of San Antonio. But at the same time, you're not contractually obligated to respond to texts and phone calls over the summer, but they are paying you, as you mentioned, about $30 million, like a common courtesy. Maybe like one of the people in your life gets in your ear and says, hey man, maybe it'll just be make your life a lot easier for the next year if you just send an emoji back with a smiley face when they holler at you, and then people like Ryan Rosillo and David Jacoby won't be talking about this in four months. Like it just seems like it's just not great strategic planning from him to be ghosting basically his bosses all summer long. Like, it just seems like a bad idea. It tells me that he is very upset about this DeRozan thing, which is not going to be great for chemistry. You can be upset, but you can also be professional. And I think that's the whole point of this, is that be upset until a point. I'm sure Dwayne Casey being bounced out after winning Coach of the Year probably has a little something to do with this, but... The hero in your own movie thing is a perfect description because a lot of times you're like, oh, are you really honest with yourself about how culpable you are in a failure? I mean, think about all of us that do this for a living. You're like, no, oh, your show never. isn't doing that well. And you'd be like, oh, it's the no. slot and our producers. It's, it's not just this business where people are not <laughs> right. honest with themselves about how culpable they are in a failure. Of course, of course. But when you're talking about a team setting and, and actually having like, it's, look, you're not related to your teammates, but you are this traveling family now for about seven months and a team that has a chance to maybe do some things here in the East. So at some point you have to get on the same page or at least talk this out. So you're not starting the season with some sort of cloud. Be excited. I know your guy's gone, but be excited that you have Kawhi at least for a year. It is a good point because, you know, you talk about this family and, and everything, and we always see what they do on the basketball court, but they spend so much time in the hotels and on the team planes. And when you take your right. best friend out of that scenario and you add in a guy that laughs like this. <laughs> it does seem like it's just going to be awkward. Like, it's just going to be awkward during or all those off-court moments. And Lowry's like, oh, I'm committed to winning. I'm committed to winning. That's what I'm here to do. I'm here to win. It's like, all right, dude, do you know what helps you win? Building a relationship with your brand new head coach. That helps you win. Building a relationship with your GM. That will help you win. Like, winning isn't just like working out in the offseason and working on your hezzy jump shot. Like, you also need to have these off court relationships that will build chemistry, that will build wins for the Toronto Raptors. Yeah, you can't sulk all season long. Okay? You just you can't do it. You can't do it that way. However, Maybe a little upset bonus to the Kawhi laugh is what if he's that guy out of the group of your friends that does laugh at all your jokes? When I oh. would co-host radio shows with Adnan Verk, nothing made me feel better about myself. I would leave that studio after three hours of Adnan Verk going, damn it, I'm funny. I'm clever. <laughs> everything I say is on point because Adnan laughs Listen. at everything. And here's another thing, Kawhi. Adnan, connections to Toronto, some stronger oh. than others. So what oh. if what if Kawhi's the Adnan of that Raptors locker room? And now Kyle Lowry's going, you know what? I'm hilarious. I didn't realize okay. I was this funny until Kawhi became my teammate. 
I love what you did there. However, there is a downside because you always love that friend that laughs all your jokes, but if they laugh like this, <laughs> <laughs> might have depreciating might have depreciating value over time. You know what I mean? I'm not sure I want I want the ad laugh to follow me that's around. Why, I'm not sure that's I want why the, the Kawhi laugh to follow me around. That's perfect. He's only, you know, nobody thinks he's going to be there after this year. So Lowry's well, like, don't thing, resign him. 